In this video, we take a look at some of the common network protocols you need to know for your exam. So first, let's look at what a protocol actually is. Let's use this simple analogy. On the left, we have someone speaking German, and on the right, we have someone speaking English. These are the only languages these two people know. So when they try to communicate, they're unable to do so. But what if the person on the left was bilingual? They can speak German and they can speak English. They now share a common language and so the two people can communicate. This is the principle of a protocol, a set of rules that allow two devices to communicate in some way. So there are many different types of protocols. The ones you need to be aware of for the exam are listed below. And as you can see from the right hand column, they perform various different functions. We're going to go through each of these in turn now and explain them in a little more detail. The first two protocols you need to be aware of are Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Now, strictly, unlike all the other protocols, neither of these are actually protocols in their own right. They are families of related protocols. Ethernet is a standard set of protocols for use on local area networks, LANs. Whereas Wi-Fi, which is a trademark and also a standard set of protocols, are used for wireless communication. We cover in more detail in the video SLR3 modes of connection wired and wireless, how these two protocols work. The first group of protocols we're going to look at are used over the internet. The first is the Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and it provides an error-free way of transmitting data between two routers. The second is the Internet Protocol, IP, and this is responsible for routing packets across a wide area network. Put them together and you have the TCP IP protocol stack. And this is the basic foundation of all communication over the internet. The third protocol in this set you need to know about is UDP, the User Datagram Protocol, and it uses a simple connectionless transmission model. It's an alternative to TCP, but unlike TCP, it has no error checking. It's used to send short messages using datagrams where speed is considered more important than the accuracy. It maintains an open two-way connection and is ideal therefore for things like online gaming. It has largely become obsolete as it's considered less reliable than TCP. Now let's take a look at HTTP and HTTPS. The Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTTP, is a way for a client and server to send and receive requests for and delivery of HTML web pages. It is a fundamental protocol of the World Wide Web. Indeed, when you type in a web address in a web browser and you look at the address at the top, you'll often see HTTP. You can see this is the protocol being used so that you can receive the web page in your browser. In a very similar way, there's a protocol called HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. It's effectively the same, except it adds a layer of encryption. So this tends to be used when a website needs to deal or handle with sensitive information, such as asking for a password to log in or placing an order of credit card information on an online store. The File Transfer Protocol is a protocol used for sending files between computers normally on a wide area network. It uses a set of common commands, which can be run from the command line for this purpose. People, however, tend to install FTP clients. Now, these are simply software applications that sit on top of the actual FTP protocol. The user interacts with the client program as shown here, and it generates and sends the appropriate FTP commands. There are also a whole family of email protocols you need to know about. The first is the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, SMTP, and it's used to send an email from a device to an email server. 
Now, this doesn't have to be a computer. You could be on your smartphone. And when you send the email, the SMTP is the protocol that takes it from your mobile and sends it to the mail server for then sending on to the recipient. The next is the post office protocol, POP, and it's used by mail clients. And by that, we mean things like mobiles, laptops, computers and tablets. And it manages the remote mailbox on servers and retrieves email from it. The important thing to note about POP is it removes the original copy of the email on the server when it's retrieved by the client. The Internet Message Access Protocol, IMAP, is also used by mail clients in a similar way to POP. However, the importance here is when the email is retrieved, it leaves the original copy of the email on the server. So in this example, I'm out in town and I log on to my mobile phone to check my emails. Now I'm assuming I've got a Wi-Fi or a 4G signal. I connect to the remote mail server and retrieve my latest emails from the mail server using the IMAP protocol. The original copy of the email, however, remains on the remote mail server. This means that when I go back into work or I'm home on my laptop, if I check my email, it's still there. IMAP prevents different devices from becoming out of sync with each other. So let's recap what we've gone over. A protocol is a set of rules that allows two devices to communicate. Ethernet is a family of related protocols that provides the basics for communications over a LAN, whereas Wi-Fi is a family of related protocols providing the basics for wireless communication. There are three protocols you need to know about for communication over LANs and WANs. There's TCP that provides an error-free transmission between two routers. There's UDP, part of the internet protocol suite used by programs running on different computers on a network and used to send short messages called datagrams. And IP, which routes packets across a wide area network. There are two protocols to be aware of for handling web page request. HTTP, a client server method of requesting and delivering HTML web pages, and HTTPS, the same as the above protocol, but with added encryption and authentication. You need to know about the file transfer protocol, which as its name suggests, is used for sending files between computers, usually on a wide area network. And finally, you need to know about two email protocols, SMTP for sending email to an email server and IMAP used by mail clients to manage remote mailboxes and retrieve email from a mail server.